Okay, so what does this symbol mean in mathematics? Now, uh, some of you might be saying, does this mean, uh, say, the number five really loud, <laughs> like an exclamation mark? And that's logical, right? It's like uh, yelling, like, number five, you know, really uh, screaming. Listen, that's not what it means, but if you said that, I actually kind of have to uh, laugh. I have to say, uh, yeah, that's pretty funny, because uh, that's probably what I would have uh, thought and went back in the good old days. Hey, what does this mean? Maybe that's like saying five really loud. No, that's not what it means. This is important stuff. Uh, especially uh, if you intend to learn uh, math beyond uh, algebra. Okay, so this is probably introduced um, uh, for some of you at the algebra one level, but as you continue to uh, learn more, you'll certainly run into this like an algebra two level, intermediate algebra, college algebra. It's not that difficult, but it's extremely important, and I'm going to explain to you uh, exactly what this is and kind of introduce you to um, how we kind of work with it, All right? So I'm going to get to that in just one second. Uh, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, uh, that's a pretty bold statement. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus uh, different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. Um, but I also have many, many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, there's a ton of other exams. Maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, all those exams and many, many others, I have great test preparation courses for them because all those exams have a lot of math on them. Okay, and you don't do well on the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So let's not that, let that happen. Uh, now, if you go to my website and you, and you do not find your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Now, um, I also do a lot of work with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have an excellent homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you who just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you truly are serious about wanting to uh, improve and be great at math, then you got to be serious about taking great math notes. I've been teaching math uh, for decades, all right? There's a lot of stuff I can't do, all right? But I teach math fairly well. Why? Because I've been doing it for, you know, years and years and years and years and years, and I'm fairly, you know, educated uh, in mathematics, all right? So this is the combination of you know, uh, focusing on one thing for a long period of time, you're going to get pretty good at it. So I'm here to tell you, you got to take great math notes. If there was a shortcut, I would have found it. <laughs> I would have found it, right? Uh, and the reverse is true. So wait, oh, let me just finish up this thought. Those students who take great math notes, they almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. That's the point I'm trying to make. Don't look for shortcuts. They're not there, okay? So if you're in math class and you're looking at your cell phone and you're checking out your social media, uh, feed, or you're doing homework for another class or talking to your buddies. All the stuff I used to do, except for the cell phone stuff, uh, we didn't have those back in the 80s. Well, we did, but they were like gigantic and they cost like $5,000 and you really couldn't do anything but talk um, on them, couldn't text. You know, but listen, we weren't deprived in the 80s. The 80s are still an awesome decade. Uh, and I was quite distracted to the point where I was getting grades like that. Okay. So, Again, you're here to learn a little bit, a little about about a little bit about math. I'm assuming you're a math student. Make sure you're taking great notes. Look at your notes now. They probably need to be improved. But as you're working on getting better at uh, note taking, you can use my notes to study. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, uh, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so what does this mean? And I'm talking about this little thing right here. Okay, it's going to be in front of a number, and it doesn't mean saying five really loud because that's kind of funny though, right? <laughs> uh, it's some of you, I'm probably sure like 75% of the people are like, yeah, you just say five really, really loud. You scream it out. No, that's not what it means. It's something called factorial, okay? Uh, the way we say this is five factorial. So when you have this little exclamation mark, that is uh, the factorial symbol. So what does that mean? Well, this is what it means, okay? Anytime you have any number, it can be eight factorial. Here we'll uh, start off with this uh, five factorial as an example. It just means take that number, so here is the number five, and then we're gonna multiply, um, we're gonna create a product here, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna just start decreasing this number by one all the way till we get to one. So it's gonna be five 
times four, we'll decrease again, times three, times two, times one, and we can't go any further, and then we multiply all this together, and we get what? We get 120, okay? So five factorial is equal to 120, but this is what it means to take the factorial of a number, okay? So uh, that's all it is, all right? It's not saying five really loud, although that is kind of funny. I keep bringing that up. Uh, nevertheless, this is important. Now, why do we need to know this? Well, uh, you're going to be learning stuff like uh, this, okay? And uh, you're like, what is this? Well, these are combinations and permutations. The factorial is all over the place uh, when you're studying uh, counting problems, uh, probability in statistics and stuff like that. Uh, you're going to need to know how to find uh, permutations and combinations of uh, numbers, and this would include factorial big time. So let's uh, kind of look at a basic idea of what that would be. So um, uh, let's say you have that, uh, let's say A, uh, G, C, D, and F, how many three-letter combinations can I make from these uh, given five letters? How many three-letter combinations can I make? Okay, so that would be an example. So like over here, A, G, C is one, uh, and maybe order doesn't make a difference. C, D, F is another. Okay, this is an example of like a combination and permutation problem. I don't want to go into all of this because I just want you uh, to be introduced to uh, the factorial. But these type of problems, and they're all over the place, okay, to solve counting problems, um, we have to learn about the factorial, okay? So that's what this is. Just a quick introduction to this. But believe me when I tell you, you know, this little symbol is not just something that's trivial. and be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. No, you're going to run into this big time, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue to learn more about uh, factorial. Okay, so here is 8 factorial. So we already defined uh, what factorial means. So we'll start with 8, and we'll start going backwards. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that uh, turns out to be 40,320. Now, let's uh, recall 5 factorial was 120, right? That's the problem I just did right here. 5 factorial, 120. So you're like, wow, okay. We went from 5 to 8. That's not much of an increase in terms of, you know, we had 6, 7, and then 8. But look how quick this thing is growing. So factorial values can get very large, okay? If you uh, put in like 95 factorial, your calculator is going to be, you know, like, you know, it's <laughs> you're going to need your calculator. So you're dealing with very, very, very large numbers, um, you know, and this grows exponentially quick. But uh, one thing that we can do when working with factorials is uh, it's that old adage, you always want to work smarter, not harder. Let's take a look at a situation where we're working with two different factorials. So let's say we want to take 8 factorial and divide it by uh, 5 factorial. So you're saying, okay, well, I know what 8 factorial is. It's this. And I know what 5 factorial is. It's this. So I could just take that and divide it by this. And, you'd, and you would get the correct answer. Okay. And the answer turns out to be 336. But when you're working with factorials, you don't work, you don't, you don't do um, operations with factorials uh, in this way. Okay, this is how you do this. Okay, so we have eight factorial divided by fact, uh, five factorial. Let's take a look at eight factorial again. It's eight times seven times six times what? Well, five, four, three, two, one. Now, isn't 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, isn't this right here in and of itself 5 factorial right here? You're like, oh, yeah, that's 5 factorial. Well, listen, I got 5 factorial on here and 5 factorial up there. Okay, this is a product. I can cross cancel because these are all factors. So I can cross cancel this guy with this guy. Okay, you're like, oh, that's awesome. So that just means I just have to, to figure this out. Instead of doing all this multiplication, I just got to figure out what 8 times 7 times 6 is. And that is 336. Okay, so again, you could, you know, take the long rate uh, to do this problem. 8 factorial, get that number. 5 factorial, 120, you get 336. But when you're working with factorial, you got to, you know, understand all these little techniques and whatnot. But I'm going to call it a wrap right here. This is a basic introduction to what this symbol means, okay, and why it's important. Okay, this helps us solve 
all sorts of combination and permutation problems. It's used everywhere, okay? Probability, statistics, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, those seven problems are actually pretty cool to solve as well, okay? counting problems and whatnot. So uh, you'll definitely uh, run into them, okay? It's not, um, you know, uh, you know, let's, what I'm trying to say here, it's not like a huge part of what you might study in algebra. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. But as you continue on, especially if you get into any kind of probability and statistics course, you're definitely going to be dealing with this symbol. Okay. All right. So hopefully you found this uh, little video interesting. If that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. I would uh, find that interesting. And if uh, you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos, math videos, basic uh, to advanced mathematics on my channel, and I'm posting new content all the time. Okay, so if you need help in mathematics, I have a ton of stuff right there on my channel. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, to try to demystify it. And, uh, you know, listen, you have to work hard at learning math. There's, you know, there's no shortcuts. However, you know, I try to use everyday you know, easy to understand language to explain concepts, all right? I don't want to, you know, regurgitate or, you know, read off a textbook because then everyone gets bored and it's no fun, okay? So if you got to study math, let's try to make the most of it. And if you like my teaching style, again, I have tons of videos there for you, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.